So it's interesting. People ask me all the time, what's your story, Leo? Imagine this, a 15-year-old, like any normal 15-year-old, fleeing his homeland, separated from parents, separated from family, and thrown into a refugee camp with thousands of other refugees. He had to flee due to another civil war in his place of refuge and ending up in another refugee camp for a total of a little over eight years. And then arriving in a place of abundance like Canada, I mean, I didn't realize it, but now that I've come to Canada, I've traveled a lot and experienced a lot. Liberia is not your ordinary African country with a little over four million people. The oldest African Republic, founded by free slaves from the United States and partly Canada as well. I came to Canada in 2006 as a government-sponsored refugee. And looking at Liberia, where I come from, and the history, and the relationship between North America and Liberia, I mean, it blows my mind as to how much one side of the world can have access to and to how little one side of the world can have access to. A lot of my colleagues and I have always dreamed of a day that we would be in a situation that we can help make our lives better. We did not have a basic chalkboards in school. We did not even have resources like books or library to be able to study the way we would have loved to study now that I'm in Canada and can realize that experience. I look back in Liberia, it's 27 students for every one textbook. And those textbooks are like from the 80s and 70s. They're not even textbooks that are any more useful in any educational setting. And that's when I realized that it's no longer about Leo. It's now about the larger community. It's about people who can be inspired from my experiences, people who can be inspired from my challenges. And that gave birth or reactivated the dream of the Liberian Learning Center, which was actually conceived on the refugee camp. They say an idle mind is, a, is the devil's workshop. What we are all here trying to achieve will be something that will go down in history as one of the most important events we've had in Liberia since we emerged from the Civil War. We've seen a need for a resource center in Liberia. I've been a Liberian and uh, that would be the first of its kind back home as an initial start to tell the um, to tell the larger community how serious we are, it's going to be a benefit to Liberians here in Canada and Liberians abroad. This initiative that I believe is very significant. I believe that, as you say, the power of one book. This is a story of success. Somebody who had a dream. I shared it with Leo. He got so into it, and then his, the opportunity came for him to go to Canada. And then he made a promise. He said, if I go to Canada, I don't promise anything, but if there's anything I'm going to work on, it will be on this project. All the board of directors and everybody that's been involved in this project um, uh, must be just so proud of, of where it's going. And, and I feel that as much as it's for Liberians, it's for Canadians, and it's for keeping a culture alive. This is an historic project and it's a historic opportunity to participate in a project that can make a tangible difference in people's lives, that can make a tangible difference in people's ability to know their culture, to store it, and to celebrate it. Couldn't imagine an entire country, three and a half million people, without a single library, uh, a place for people to gather, to learn, to uh, communicate with each other. I'm a great believer, as, as many people are, that education and learning is uh, is the path to the future for Liberians. Looking at Liberian youth who come from other elementary, junior, senior high school with no place to do their own assignment. And I was really frustrated about two weeks ago when I got a call from a that the only street light that was in my yard is where the children from the neighborhood in Liberia, education is hard to come by. Communication, learning about the, the larger world, 
doesn't exist. There is no library in this country, um, and educational institutes are, are cropping up. But at the at the youngest level, at the the childhood level, um, this type of an institution can offer the catalyst for future generations and education to those generations. With what I've seen thus far, I'm convinced that Leo and Empowerment Square has the capacity to pull this tax off. I'm proud. I'm proud to be a Hamiltonian. Well, here we are today talking about raising $2 million to have this facility erected as a demonstration of where the future of Liberia lies and how we can take the culture of a country and translate it in a way that we can preserve it, sustain it, and also celebrate it. Having the privilege as a board member of Empowerment Square to be able to travel directly to Liberia with Leo Johnson allowed me to witness firsthand the passion that Liberians have for learning and the need they have for an opportunity to do it in a supported environment. A learning center, when built, will represent to an entire nation an investment in education and become a symbol of hope for an entire generation. Well, the Liberian Learning Center will be more than bricks and mortars. The center will provide a safe space and act as a resource to serve community-based organizations and initiatives, empowering them to provide necessary programs and services to the Liberian people.